Hi everyone, I'm Ness. Welcome to my weekly human rights talk. This week, in honor of the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, I'm going to follow up the information I shared last week on Article 2 of the ADA by talking about Article 3 of the ADA, which requires businesses and organizations to remove barriers to accessibility and makes it illegal to discriminate against people due to disability in public accommodations. But before I jump into that discussion, I want to take a moment to discuss the history of the ADA because it's a really cool history and a really important part of the history of self-advocacy. The ADA was signed into law on July 26, 1990 by President George H.W. Bush, which means that this past Sunday, the ADA turned 30 years old. But before this law made it to the president to sign, before it passed in Congress, there was a huge advocacy effort by self-advocates with disabilities to show how important the issues of discrimination and accessibility were. Organized advocacy efforts by disabled folks in the United States asking for fair and equal rights started being noticed and paid attention to by folks who were not disabled around the time of other major civil rights movements in the United States, like movements to end racial segregation and discrimination against Black people and movements for LGBTQ rights in the 1960s and 1970s. These civil rights movements didn't just inspire each other, they also worked together a lot. Between the 60s and 1990, when the ADA passed, there was a number of smaller legislative victories for equality for disabled folks, but some of the new laws that increased equality for disabled folks weren't ever fully funded. So even though the laws changed, the actual lives of folks with disabilities didn't change as much. There was still a lot of discrimination and disabled against disabled folks and a lot of spaces that were segregated based on the fact that they weren't accessible to folks with some types of disabilities. So, uh, ma so major advocacy efforts and protests kept happening and finally the ADA passed and became a law. So what I'm trying to say is the ADA was a wonderful thing that Congress did and signing it was a wonderful thing that President Bush did, but getting it passed was also a wonderful and amazing Thing that activists and self-advocates and civil rights leaders with and without disabilities did. So it's important to thank Congress and it's important to thank President H.W. Bush and it's also really important to thank the self-advocates who worked so hard to make this happen. So now on to talking about Article 3 of the ADA. You might remember that Article 1, which I talked about a few weeks ago, focuses mainly on employment, and Article 2, which I talked about last week, focuses mainly on public entities. Article 3 talks about public accommodations. First, I want to explain the difference between public entities and public accommodations, because that difference was confusing to me, so I figure it might be confusing for other folks out there as well. So a public entity is a building or program run by the state or local government. A public accommodation is any business program or building that is generally open to the public, even if it is privately run, even if it doesn't get any government funding, it's fully owned by a private business owner. As long as it serves the public, it counts as a public accommodation. So this includes things like Restaurants, stores, movie theaters, bowling galleries, art galleries, hair salons, hotels, all of these businesses count because even though they're owned by individual business owners and not by the government, they're open to the public. So Article 3 of the ADA makes it illegal to discriminate against people with disabilities in any program or place of business that is open to the public. Article 3 covers accessibility of the place where the business or program is, policies of the business or program, and actions of the employees of the business or program. The goal of Title III of the ADA is to provide goods and services in a way that is integrated, which means a setting where people with disabilities can receive goods and services together with people who don't have disabilities equally and in the same way. 
Under the ADA, separate accommodations for people with disabilities are only okay if they're necessary to ensure equal access. There's actually a really cool example of this that many folks have probably seen around recently, which is a lot of grocery stores and drug stores and some other businesses now have an hour or so early in the morning where the store will only let in people who are elderly or who have compromised immune systems. While this is separate from the time that other folks shop, so it's not integrated, it's necessary for these folks to be able to access these stores because going in more crowded times would be more dangerous for these folks. The ADA has specific standards to meet when it comes to the physical accessibility of spaces. This is because it's discriminatory and, and segregation um, for folks not to be able to get into a, a place of business. These standards include things like not just having stairs, but also having ramps or elevators, having aisles and hallways and doorways that are a certain width, having accessible restrooms that have grab bars and stalls and doorways that are a certain size, having braille signage, and much, 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 much more. It's a really long list of requirements. Under the EDA, businesses have to remove barriers to accessibility, like by putting in a ramp if the only entrance has stairs, unless doing so would be structurally impractical or doing so would present an undue burden. When looking at whether making a building meet accessibility standards would be an undue financial burden, the financial resources of the business are considered. So a business that has a lot of money, like a store that's part of a big chain or major corporation, might have to make changes to existing buildings, but a tiny family-owned business that doesn't have a lot of money might not. Like in other parts of the ADA, new construction has to meet accessibility standards, and if a business owner is making significant updates or changes to an existing building, the part they're updating has to meet the accessibility standards, unless making it meet these standards would be structurally impractical. But it's very, very rare for an exception to be made on the basis of a change being structurally impractical. Under Title III of the ADA, businesses must find a way to still serve people with disabilities even when they can't remove barriers to accessibility. So just because a store doesn't have the money to build a ramp or an elevator doesn't mean it's okay for them not to sell the things they sell to people with disabilities. They just have to find another way to do it. So an example of this is that there used to be a small ice cream shop near where I live. It had stairs to the entrance and the store didn't have the money to put in a ramp, but they still had to be able to serve ice cream to people who can't walk up the stairs. So what they did was if you couldn't come into the store, you could call them and they would read the flavors of the day to you. You could order and they would bring your ice cream out to you. Under Title III of the ADA, businesses also have to change policies and procedures that prevent equal access for people with disabilities. An example of this is that before the ADA, a lot of businesses had policies that said that animals were not allowed. Under the ADA, these businesses had to change their policies to allow service animals. Finally, the practices and procedures of businesses also have to be equal under the ADA. Practices and procedures are just how a business is actually run whether or not it's written down in the policy saying it's run that way. This covers the way employees of a business treat people with disabilities. Under the ADA, it's illegal for employees of a business to treat people with disabilities in an unfair or discriminatory way. So those are some of the most major parts of Title III of the ADA. I'll post a link with more information on Title III in the comments. If you believe that you're being discriminated against in a business, there are a few things you can do. The first is that you can sue the business. This type of lawsuit is different than the type of lawsuit that results in you getting money. Usually if you win a lawsuit over an ADA violation, especially a Title III violation, the business is just required to fix the problem. A second thing you can do is report the violation to the Department of Justice. They will investigate the problem and if they decide that it's an issue of major public importance, the Department of Justice may sue the business. This would prevent you having to worry about finding a lawyer or putting your own resources into the process with the court system. If you report to the Department of Justice, they will investigate the problem and if they decide it's an issue of major public importance, the Department of Justice may sue the business. 
A third thing you can do is report your um, with report the instance of discrimination to the local civil rights commission in your area. Not every city or state has its own civil rights laws about accessibility and discrimination against people with disabilities, but many do. I'll post links with more information about these processes in the comments. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, remember to check back next week. I post videos about human rights every Wednesday at 530. If you have any questions, need support, or just want to say hi, please comment here or message me at West Reads and Self Advocacy on Facebook. Have a great night.